It's a misfield. It's a hundred for Nathan Astle. Fabulous innings to watch. Very meaningful too for Nathan Astle. It's on his home ground. Eighth test century. The strike rate is extraordinary. His execution precision outstanding. He hasn't dwelt on it for very long, has he? Let's have another look at how he got there. It was an extremely well-controlled stroke. He got on top of the ball, which meant that Craig White had to do some fielding or to try to do some fielding. Oh dear. It would be a performance as a substitute fielder that Craig White will remember with a great deal of fondness, having dropped a catch down at third man in the first innings as well. He's got another chance to prove himself that he can't do that, pull that one in either. Astle enjoying himself here. He hasn't had a good uh, run at Jay Stadium in his career. High score of just 45. And New Zealand bring 300 up. Three thousand test runs, uh, you know, a big milestone in any um, test cricketer's career. You know, you knocked that off just before you got your hundred. I mean, were you focusing on that at all? Did you? Was that in the back of your mind? I had no idea. Um, I think with me, the, the biggest thing, the stats, is hopefully they fall into place and you get told about them afterwards. And to me, if I'm doing that, then I'm concentrating on what I should be doing, and that's watching the ball. And uh, it's always nice to get those milestones and, and be told about them. You got your hundred. It was a, a I mean, a, an exceptional hundred. Uh, eight down at this stage. Ian Butler joins you, de debutante. Um, was that where you just really uh, said, well, I'm going to open my shoulders good and proper here. I've, I've got absolutely nothing to lose. I, I don't think I ever said that to myself, and I think that's what people can't actually believe I did. I just, I just tried to be positive, and uh, obviously it did work, but there wasn't a time in the innings where I said, OK, I'm just going to try and bail everything out of the park. And It never happened that way. It just all kind of rolled into one, and I just played, and uh, it all worked out well. England are persisting with this bouncer tactic that Astle has in pretty complete control when a length ball at off stump he'd push into the covers and flint off could bowl five at the other guy. Doesn't mean that sort of match though, has it? <laughs> You're right, it hasn't actually. This hasn't followed logic, has it? How about that? How about the links ball pushed into the covers? Too wide. <laughs> Great shot, wasn't it? Well, they're coming off his bat like... <laughs> Lovely sound, it's so crisp. Crack. Cover, which was uh, three quarters of the way back, was sort of wanting around to pick that up and it just raced by. 19 fours, two sixes. Astle now 115. Um, I think that's a bit of a hoax. I think that that is just a little trick. I can't imagine Chris Cairns coming in next with Lou Vincent, the runner. So with the new ball taken, Matthew Hoggard is recalled into the attack at the southern end of the ground. his own trail he has played some fabulous shots it's a screamer nice shape <laughs> he just uh, he bent the back leg a little just to get a bit lower towards it and he used that uh, length of the bat almost a horizontal slash through cover
Well, Hoggard will do well, even by his standards, to retain his sense of calm here. Mistral just th throwing all and everything into that. Just to quickly perhaps throw in a couple of ideas before this game is wrapped up. I think they'll bring Chris Harris back for the base reserve. Lou Vincent might miss out. Well, oh, that's a beauty. That is a beauty. Straight down the ground. The best shot on the game. That's like a one iron. Right out of the screws. He stays in this. It's really done with uh, almost a forearm jab.